It's the Chinese Communist Party pulling the wool over everybody's eyes when it comes to the uh, WHO's halted COVID origins investigation. The CCP claiming China supports global origins tracing, but opposes, quote, any political manipulation. Joining me right now is Ohio Congressman, Chairman of the House Coronavirus Pandemic Select Subcommittee and member of the House Oversight and Ways and Means Committee, Dr. Brad Winstrom. Congressman, it's great to see you. Thanks very much for being here. Uh, we're all very uh, grateful that you are working on this investigation into the origins of COVID-19. But my question is why and how it is even possible. We are sitting here in February 2023. And COVID showed up in February 2020 or January 2020. And as far as I know, you and your colleagues have not had one hearing on the origins of COVID-19. Is that right? Uh, that's right. We really have not. Of course, we haven't had gavels to call for those hearings, and that's been the problem. You know, you mentioned the WHO in this situation, the World Health Organization, and, and they're stepping back from phase two of the origins of COVID investigation. Well, there, the reason they're stepping back, and that's because China has not been cooperative. You know, the World Health Organization should exist to benefit all of humankind. And you have to have willing members of the World Health Organization that will cooperate and share information if it's going to be functional. The question is, why is China still in the World Health Organization? Why are they not expelled from it? Because they don't cooperate. But look, with our investigations and what we have been doing quietly, really uh, predominantly with Republicans on various committees, especially the Intelligence Committee, uh, we're trying to discover what others won't willingly tell us. And in this case, it's, it's China. And they're going to propagandize this and just say that, well, the reason WHO is getting out is because uh, we didn't do anything wrong. And that we have nothing to do with it. It just happened to start in China. Well, isn't so it we're going to investigate this. Yeah. Isn't yeah. it true, though, that it was Xi Jinping who placed the head of the World Health Organization in his job? Well, that's the, that's the whole problem. So you have a politicization of the World Health Organization uh, where, you know, how much you invest into it, I guess, gives you com control over it. And so that's a problem. But, you know, you see that China has not been cooperative. They haven't been cooperative with us. And so we, we've got to get into all of this and get and be transparent and get to the facts. And we can get to certain facts. Uh, but it's not going to come from China, unfortunately. So we have to dig that we're going to do basically an after-action review, lessons learned, the positives and negatives of the decisions made by our government and the effects around the world, and hopefully develop a path forward. You know, our goal at the end of all this is not only to make things very transparent yeah. and people have an understanding of the origins of COVID, but how it affected everything, because we want to be able to predict and prepare and to prevent an, a future pan pandemic. Well, there was, and so that, that's our goal in all this. There was no response from the U.S. to China's cover-up of the COVID-19 disaster. Uh, and so why wouldn't they feel empowered to send a surveillance balloon to America and uh, potentially three others that were shot down last weekend? You know, I mean, this is the issue here. Yep. I, and I guess what I want to know from you is you've already done a lot of digging, Congressman, right? Uh, were they working on a bioweapon right. that escaped when well, COVID-19 yeah, escaped? There, yeah, there's some things, Maria, that have been out there for some time. And in 2005, our own State Department uh, said that they felt that China was working on a bioweapons program. And, you know, in 2015, uh, we not only have a published article between Ralph Barrick in the United States and Xi Zengli in China, where they have created a chimera or a gain of function type of virus. But also in 2015, the Academy of Military Medical Science in China and their fifth institute, which works on coronaviruses and bioweapons, published a book that talked about genetic bioweapons. So, you know, their desire has been there. So certainly that has to be part of the equation of what we're looking into. Right. And obviously that's going to take a deep dive in investigation. Yes. I am with your former colleague in the House, Lee Zeldin, this morning. Go ahead, Lee. Well, you know, you can hear that uh, Congressman Wenstrup is also a military guy. And this That's is right. key with the lessons learned. It's not when conducting oversight just about what has gone wrong. What are the positives? 
and uh, you know, Congressman Wenstrup, just speak to that in, in how you're doing this oversight correctly uh, in not just trying to identify what's wrong, but also lessons learned and that legislative purpose. Well, first of all, Lee, it's great to be with you this morning. Uh, we miss you, um, but you know you're exactly right. And you know when I got selected to to chair the select subcommittee, I immediately called Dr. Raul Ruiz, Democrat emergency physician, and said, "Please try to get on this committee and try to be ranking member," which he has become. Look, he and I differ politically on a lot of things, but we have worked together, and especially on things that involve the health of, of America. We've written many bills. We did the Mission Act, uh, the No Surprises Act. This is somebody I can work with, and that's going to be our approach: is to be very professional about what took place, what were the motives for the decisions that have been made, and were there positives or negatives? You know, what are the effects on the education of our children and the social development of our children? How did our government programs work? Where was there waste, fraud, and abuse? You know, what? how did these policies affect America? And were they right policies like lockdowns and masking and mandates? We, we have to have those conversations, and we need to do it frankly and so that we can be better going forward. There'll be some fallout probably for some people as to why they made certain decisions. And we we need to know were those decisions made politically or made on science, made for personal gain. All of those things we have to try to figure out, but we have to go and follow the facts and follow the money. Yeah, and real quick, what do you want to hear from Biden? Why haven't we heard from Joe Biden on all of these uh, objects that were shot down over the weekend? Do you believe they're from uh, China? Yeah, obviously we want to hear from, you know, I just listened to what the vice president said in Munich, and she said, our policy with China has not changed. Well, I know in 2011, Joe Biden said a rising China is a positive development. And she said, we seek competition, but not conflict or confrontation. Well, that sounds like to me is like, I hope they're not mad that we shot down their balloon. You know, I want to see some toughness and I want to let China know that we're going to stand up to them and they're not allowed to take over our country. You know, the United States of America is not the Biden family yard sale. We're the United States of America and we're a sovereign nation and we need this administration to act like that. Well, it's, it's just incredible to me that she says we seek competition, not conflict. I think it's pretty obvious that they're seeking conflict. Everywhere they turn, they're seeking economic conflict. They're seeking military domination. Uh, they are yeah. seeking control. Let's let's look at just our pharmaceutical industry. They control that across yeah. the world. If they shut us off for the active pharmaceutical ingredients that right now so many of them only they can provide, right. we are sunk. We well, are sunk. Well, that that is, the, and they threatened to do just that during COVID, right? Through their through yes. their propaganda, yeah. uh, Xinhua Times or one of those propaganda sites uh, said, well, maybe we won't send the prescription drugs to America right now during 2020. Uh, Congressman, that leads me to a whole other set of questions of why do we have all of these supply chains in China? We've got to jump, but real quick, do you want to answer that? Why this has not been moved yet? Well, we, we let it get way too far uh, because it was cheaper. Yeah. We've got to start turning this back. And if we're not competing globally and if we're not creating incentives for the businesses and manufacturers to be in the United States of America, we're going to continue to have a problem. And raising taxes, which the Biden administration likes to do, uh, does not help bring manufacturing back to the United States. Yeah. But it's a national security threat and it's a national health threat. Congressman, we'll be watching your very important work. Thanks very much. Thank you. All right, Brad Wenstrup joining us. We'll be right back.